This video describes the joint mobilizations available at the sternoclavicular joints. Those are a caudal glide or inferior glide, which is for restricted elevation, a cranial glide, which is for restricted depression, a ventral glide, which is for restricted protraction, and a dorsal glide, which is for restricted retraction. To begin, we're going to do a caudal or inferior glide. I'm going to palpate the joint space between the manubrium and the uh, clavicle. I'll have my thumb on that joint space, my thenar eminence on the length of the clavicle to provide pressure. My other hand will rest over it. And while palpating the joints, I am going to do an inferior glide. From there, you can do graded oscillations. The next mobilization is a cranial or superior glide. Again, palpating the joint line between the clavicle and the manubrium. I'm putting my thumb on the joint line to palpate for hyper or hypomobility, just to assess mov movements. Then I put my thenar eminence on the length of the clavicle and apply pressure cranially. The next mobilization we're going to do is a dorsal glide. Again, my thumb palpates the joint line between the clavicle and the manubrium, and I apply a dorsal force. And from there, I can do my graded oscillations. The last mobilization can be slightly uncomfortable, so make sure you explain to your patient what you're doing before. Uh, I'm going to palpate the joint line I'm going to basically grab the entire clavicle and lift it, lift it towards me. So this is a ventral glide. It's important to remember that the clavicle and manubrium are connected by a biconcave disc. The biconcave discs means that for the motions of elevation and depression. It is a convex clavicle moving on a concave disc. For protraction and retraction, it's a concave disc moving on a convex manubrium.